This is the one where white people are like start rapping puns about rapping gifts and they think they're clever. They're like, I'm rapping and I ain't talking about Macy's gift rap promotion because I'm too lazy to wrap my own presents for my family because I'm a workaholic and I'm never home. But I'm also a regular alcoholic because I work too much because I got trapped thinking that a 401k was a way to do it and you just spend 60 hours a week and you hate whoever you married and you don't want to spend time with your family so you don't even pick out the gifts and you just take them and say fuck it wrap this shit up for my shitty family am i being too transparent as a bad parent anyway stop it ladies and gentlemen we're sorry we did not mean to go down that dark rabbit hole okay but that's just the truth of the american dream that's something they don't want to tell you how so many of these people they hate their fucking life you know you get caught down what you think people put a finger in their your face and they tell you what you need to be doing for your life nah fuck that rise up young kings and queens and whatever else you want to be all right you want to be a little uh jester fucking go for it you can be anything you want in this world that's the beautiful side to all this uh i guess you could call it progressive uh more like militant progression uh is that you can just identify as whatever i don't really care all right you do whatever the fuck you want to do but that's the American dream they sell you. Think it's all about 401ks and retirements. That never made sense to me. When I was a little kid, they'd be like, yeah, you retire and then you travel the world. And I'm just like, what? Yeah, you retire at 65, 70, and then you're fucking, you do what you want to do. Oh, okay, because it's fun to taste fucking food in Italy when you don't have any more taste buds. That's cool. You know, that's. You just got to find a way to live while you're young, you know? Uh, that wasn't even the point of that song. That song was not supposed to take that turn, but sometimes it just happens. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Is this take two of this episode? Yeah, it is. Listen, it, we could end up with a take three because uh, for some reason my computer decided to overheat, got overloaded, giggity, and we're just still figuring it out in this new space, all right? Uh... Ain't nothing to it but to do it, and we're going to get through it. If you're looking at the video, 1% better every day, all right? The podcast is a growing, and we're trying to get better. We are at 199 episodes, ladies and gentlemen. I don't even know. Ooh. 199 episodes. Are we gonna hit 200? No one knows. Am I gonna have a secret guest? No. Ooh. I tried to get one for a hundred, buddy. His management said no, he doesn't wanna do it. I almost reached back out for 200, but I couldn't take it if they said no, nah, he's not gonna do it. 200, ladies and gentlemen. We're coming up on it, giggity. It's it's rising up right in front of us. You know what I'm talking about. It's been a long journey. Has this gotten better? Yeah, I think so. I'd like to think so. You know, the feedback I get is positive. Have I lost probably a couple friends because of this podcast? Yeah, I think so, but that's natural, you know? There's just this thing that happens when you're just like, just gonna say my opinion. I'm just gonna say my piece, and it's it, it's just an opinion. It doesn't matter if you don't like it. I don't give a shit, you know. Um, but we need to start having guests again. It's just hard to coordinate sometimes, you know. There's no excuse. You got you got it. Is what it is. You just gotta figure it out. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Um, I had something. We were already talking about something else on the last version of this, and it was good. It was a little nugget. Um. Oh, where were we? Where were we? Oh, yeah. So what I was saying about doing 199 episodes, what have been the benefits? 
I'm, I, I've taken an approach to this podcast of just, I'm just in the process. I'm just going with it. I'm not looking at numbers anymore. I mean, I'll see them peripherally. Once we hit a certain land, milestone, I went, cool. We, we hit that and I'm not going to put any more you know, burden on this. Uh, because then you stop caring about why you're doing it. Um, but one thing that I've seen that's gotten better from doing this podcast is my ability to riff on stage, which is important uh, just to be able to react to things. The worst thing I, I hate seeing, uh, and it happens with newer comics, is when something happens in the audience and they don't acknowledge it. They don't acknowledge any weirdness. They just are like, oh, I'm doing a rehearsal. Because if something falls and breaks, uh, if someone drives by honking a horn, if a police siren goes off, whatever it is, you got to at least acknowledge it because the rest of the room is focused on that. Um, and it almost becomes weird if someone yells something out or if a police, you know, that's a pretty common one. That it's, it's easy. It's such an easy riff and people think you made it up on the spot. But if a police siren goes by and you just go, oh, fuck, they found me gets laugh every time. I don't know why it's stupid. I usually say stupid. Don't laugh at that. And that I gets a laugh and I'm like, no, stop laughing at me. Um, sometimes that turns them on me. But anyway, doing a podcast has given me an ability to get better at just speaking. Uh, cause I don't do takes. I don't do, you know, I don't cut it up into segments. I don't edit it. And it's like you, I think the in the beginning it was almost weird for me because I was like, "Fuck, how do I keep them dice rolling?" You know what I'm saying? How do I just keep it going without it getting awkward or weird? And I'm sure there's times where it does get awkward and slow, and I'm just like, "Well, I really painted myself in a corner here." But then being forced to have to find a way through that and still make it entertaining. The same thing on stage, dude. Last night I was on stage for how many people were there? Uh, five people. Five people. The night before, did a spot. Uh, four people, and out of those four people, they were comics. Austin's going through a cold spell. All right, it's hitting fifty degrees, and for some reason, uh, they do not like uh the cold. I was like, I thought Texans were just built different. Apparently, that doesn't have to do with temperature. Okay, not on the flip side. There's like, nah, fuck this. I'm staying in, making a fire. Uh, but last night, I'm performing, and all of a sudden. Uh, what did I say? I said some, and I said the fucking word three times in in a row. You know, where you're just like, eh, but, but eh, the, and I literally was like, oh, wow. And then I went, oh, wow, I had a stroke. Cool. And I had to acknowledge it that I stroked out on stage. Um, but if you don't acknowledge those things, it just gets fucking weird. Um, I was riffing about charcuterie boards, which I don't really believe in charcuterie boards. If I'm being honest with, with you, that's something I learned here in Austin, a charcuterie board. I didn't know. I went my entire adult life without ever knowing what a goddamn charcuterie board is. It sounds like a fucking charbroiled pussy. Damn, girl, you got that charcuterie. I don't know. I mean, you guys can use that if you want, if you want to start calling it charcuterie. Let me add that hot charcuterie, girl. Uh, that shit is flame broiled. Um, I, I don't think you want that, actually. But it doesn't make sense. It's just a piece of wood charcuterie board, a.k.a. the privilege platter, because I only see white people. Who, who who grew up uh, drinking out of those weird wine cups. You know, that's like the new trend. It's like no more just wine glasses. It's just like wine cups. That's how you know you're privileged, when you just grow up with those. Uh, but I've never heard of anybody with a fucking charcuterie board. And if anybody ever told me, hey, let's split a charcuterie board, I'd be like, hey, uh, we should probably split up and just not be friends anymore. Because I'm not eating off anything called a charcuterie board. It's a made-up term. I think what it really comes down to is there was just some really stubborn person. And they were just like, they were hosting a dinner party. And they were like, no, I didn't fucking bring out food on a cutting board on accident. It's a new, it's a new fucking trend, Becky. It's called charcuterie board. Yeah, I bet you haven't heard of it, peasant bitch. You know? That's what I think. That's how I think it got invented. And then it just kind of took off. Like Becky was driving home with her husband, Ben. And then Ben was just like, what's wrong? And she's like, why don't we have a charcuterie board? And he's like, are you joking? Well, we don't have one. Do I look like I'm joking? And she gives him that stern look. And he's like, okay, we'll get a fucking charcuterie board. And then he went to the store. 
and he asked for a charcuterie board and they just brought him a cutting board and he said, perfect. And the person who was selling him just shook their fucking head and they were having a hard time moving cutting boards. So he said, hey, take half of these cutting boards, put them in a different section and label, label them charcuterie boards. And they sold out first day. Just white people just pulling them off the shelves. It was like, it was like Black Friday. It was like White Friday, if I'm being honest. All right. And that's the story of charcuterie boards originated here in Austin. Just call it a party platter. All right. Oh, d'oeuvres. That's another one that can suck my dick. Oh, d'oeuvres. Appetizers. Finger food. Why does everybody have to get so fucking fancy with it? Oh, d'oeuvres. Oh, and we're just going to throw an apostrophe in there for no fucking reason. Yeah, I wanted to sell it, you know, split it up like it's fucking O'Malley. Oh, Brian. Oh, shut the fuck up and just call it an appetizer. That's what I say. Oh, d'oeuvres. You know what else is fucking ridiculous? What is that fucking, uh, you put like a fucking marshmallow and chocolate and you put it in there with the stick? It's like a dessert thing. Oh, they have fucking, I'm trying to find the word. It's on my tongue. Uh, fondue. Go fondue your fucking asshole bleached. All right. S'mores. Wet s'mores. That is dry s'mores right there. And I just mean dries and there's no fire. Oh, d'oeuvres or a fucking fondue. You got me all fucked up right now. Had another stroke. All right, this might be the last episode. Stroked out. Fondue. Fondue is the laziest form of s'mores there's ever been. Fondue. Hey, do you want to fucking hang this over a fire? No, I want the fucking chocolate to be melted for me, peasant. I want you to create a whole system and machine. I want a fucking chocolatey flowing waterfall of diabetic liquid. That's the dark truth of fucking fondue. That is liquid diabetes right there. Just liquid heart attack. A waterfall into cardiac arrest. Why do it? Why don't you go outside into the woods and be a man and make some s'mores? Oh, am I bringing toxic masculinity? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a straight male bringing toxic energy. You really shouldn't judge people if they want to eat fondue. How dare you? Uh, that is one thing that I've had to deal with in Austin is a lot of blue hair. And normally I don't mind it. Some cool people have blue hair out there. But there's red flags and then there's blue hair. I think those two things are synonymous. I see someone with blue hair and I'm like, oh, they fucking hate me. They've never even seen me before, but they just hate my kind. I feel like I walk into a room and blue hair, it's like they get goosebumps all along their hair. All their blue hair stands up and their spidey sense go on and they go, one is here. One from the patriarchy is here. Eat the rich or whatever dumb shit people say when they protest. Let people live. Go out and make a fucking s'more. I'm about to be a man, ladies and gentlemen. About to be a man. Your boy got invited deer hunting. All right. I've been, I've been talking about it for years. Been wanting to go. Two days notice. I got the call. Dropping everything. All right, fuck it. I'm going deer hunting. Going to make it happen. Go out there and get me a Bambi. Hopefully. Hopefully. But I'm going to get taught how to be a real Texan. My born and raised Texan. Okay. Old timer. Been here all his life. And I'm just going to learn the way. I'm going to sleep on cots. I'm going to look up at the stars. And I'm just going to get back in touch with nature. I think that's important, you know. To, to break up your normal schedule, the monotony. Monotony me. It's not in me, okay? Someone will coin that term, raise the price by 20%, call it fondue. It's going to be the fondue of the monotony. Back to the story, keep up. I don't even know what the fucking story was, but your boy's going deer hunting, getting back out in the wilderness. So yeah, breaking it all up. Sometimes you just got to say, fuck it. 
get out there, get your peepers on some trees, get your peepers on some perspective. Because it's easy. You get lost in the rabbit hole. We've talked about burnout on this podcast before and doing too much and trying to figure it out. I'm someone who has a hard time relaxing, investing in recovery, and uh, uh, recreational activities. It could be a fucked up thing where I'm like, no, you need to do this, and you don't deserve recreational activities. But it's important. And that's what I've been trying to figure out recently. It's focusing more on Enjoying good times and recovering correctly so you have more energy uh, to actually work. When you think there's, you know, work that needs to be done, sometimes if you take a break, give yourself some time off, you come up, you come back to that work even better than before. You get it done faster. There was a, a company pretty recently, uh, within the last couple of years, they switched their entire company, uh, over 500 employees, to a four-day schedule. And it was something where you're not allowed to even email or call or text. Uh, you can't even access your email over the weekend, the three-day weekend. And you can't call or text about work. There's no work that's allowed to be done on those three days. And a lot of people are like, that's terrible. You're going to lose so much productivity and blah, blah, blah. And they found out that their workers came back and they even started profiting more. The output was better. The efficiency was better. And it like goes to speak about how important recovery and recreational activities are. So your boy is going out there to get a Bambi. Just getting back with mother, mother nature, you know. Hopefully, are we going to get a deer? We hope so. We hope so. But if not, I'm just there for a good time, you know. Just there for a good time. There was... Uh, I have one current event. I have one. Um, there was the better. Actually, I think I have a couple. There was the better. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw this. Someone actually leaked it on the uh, the Zoom. The boss. The boss of better dot com. Hold on, hold on, hold on, stick with me. He mass fired 900 employees on Zoom, just casually. He's the boss of a startup mortgage website who fired 900 employees over a Zoom call last week, has apologized after coming under fire for how he handled the mass layoff. I fail to show the appropriate amount of respect and appreciate for the individuals who are affected and for their contributions to better. Um, <laughs> what's crazy is it's fine. Listen, I always think that when you go that route of being a corporate worker and working for a company like that, you're at the whim of them. If they want to fire you, if you chose that route where you're like, I'm going to try to work my way up this corporate ladder and you know history has shown that you're disposable i've always been like well if you take that route there's a lot of safety and you know getting a paycheck every every two weeks or whatever the payout is you get all the benefits and everything like that but you are liable to be replaced pretty easily when they start making cuts they're not going to be like hey you know you sacrificed a lot to be with me you know they don't give a shit about that i've I have friends who have horror stories of just working for companies and that company just one day, you know, be, like making sacrifices, going above and beyond to do good for this company. And then they get to a place where, you know, the company all of a sudden just one thing happens and the company's like, you're fired. Sorry, I don't care that you've given eight years to us, 10 years to us. You're done because this is just what it is. You're just an asset. Uh, so it sucks. It sucks that this happened. And this guy, it was an example of that where he's just like, nah, you know, it, it is what it is. We have to make cuts, but here's what's fucked up. Better.com 
received a $750 million cash infusion into the business that week. So this, this is pure speculation and opinion piece. But if you were about to get a huge job and a huge infusion for mo of money, if I was a shitty boss, I'd be like, oh, wow, look at this vacation bonus. I'm about to lay off all these workers so I don't have to give them any of this money. That's what it seems like what happened. Um, because I feel like if you get $750 million, you should be able to afford these motherfuckers. Um, but he, it's funny because I watched the video and he does say this line. He goes, this is the second time in my career I'm doing this and I did not want to do this. The last time uh, I did it, I cried. And what's ironic is this time he did it. He seemed like a robot. He was very cold and he did it over Zoom. Disrespectful. That's the new breaking up over text. You ever had someone break up with you over text? Brutal. Brutal. Dude, I remember uh, I was in high school dating this girl. Fucking whore. Just kidding. Shout out to, shout out to everybody who got me down this, this journey. It was like going into the weekend and she texts me on like Friday at night. She goes, this isn't working. I want a, a break. I think we should break up. And I go, uh, what? Like it came out of nowhere. And then I tried calling her and she didn't pick up. Cause I'm just like, oh, this is crazy. And then she didn't pick up. And I'm like, you just, what, what's happening right now? And the story is, this girl broke up with me over text message and went on a three-day weekend to the lake. Like, she was just like, you know what? I'm fucking single for this weekend. And she tried getting back with me, like, the next week. Yeah, she did. Did I take her back? I don't want to tell you guys how that story ended, okay? Because I'm embarrassed. Um, but yeah, I listen, here's the thing about high school. You think... Your first like relationships when you're just in high school and everything fucking matters so much. In hindsight, I'd be like, yeah, 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 don't worry about it. We don't have to break up, but you just do whatever you want this weekend. You know, this whole just dating in high school thing, it's ridiculous. Unless you're like seniors and now you're going to be going to college, the same place, which I'm just like, I'm against that. Just go be your own individual. But it's like, don't take it too serious. I don't know if I have any high school listeners to this podcast, but let me tell you, if you're beat up over a girl breaking up with you or you're, you're, you're sacrificing so much, don't take it too serious. Just have fun. Have fun. Be good to people. Don't be a shitty person. But it's like, don't let that shit mess you up. I even think once you're in college, I got hung up in relationships in college too. And it just like, dude, so much wasteful energy, wasted toxic relationships. And I don't, I don't mean wasted. I just mean I wasted a lot of time being upset about things that in the big picture of life don't matter. But you don't realize they don't matter until you're out of them and you're like in a good relationship. And that's also what's important too is to have those shitty relationships. Because then when you have a good relationship, you actually appreciate it. You know what the fuck is out there. And you're like, thank God I'm not out there dancing with the devil anymore. Okay? That's like, you know... With what I do with stand-up, I'm out all the time. You know, bars, clubs, whatever it is. Like, I'm out in the scenes and, you know, there's, you know, girls around and there's everything like that. But there's just so much drama and so much stuff. And I'm like, I just want to do what I want to do. And I'm out. Like, I, none of this really is is cool to me. I don't like to party at all, really, anymore. Uh, but it's just like, when you keep that perspective, and you have to keep that perspective of... This is so much worse than what I have, you know, in my life. It's so much stress. And that's where I think people fuck up because I've had friends who, who mess up and I've been on both sides and I've, I've spookily been able to call it when I've had girlfriends who, uh, and I just mean girls who are friends, got dumped by a guy. I had a friend in particular 
She got dumped for a guy who she sacrificed so much to be with, took care of him in a time of need, like a real serious lifetime of need, where if someone shows you that level of care, you're like, this is a saint. This is a very, very good person. And they did so much more for me than the average person would do. And this guy didn't appreciate it at all. Once he got, you know, better and didn't need her, you know, didn't need someone to take care of him, he ended up going to Vegas, cheating on her, and then started dating the girl that he cheated on her with. And I remember I went over there. Uh, I'm friends with the family too. And I remember I telling her, I was like, dude, trust me, you are golden in this situation. He fucked up all this stuff. And I said, in six months, a year, we are going to laugh at this, that this was such a heartbreaking moment and everything in this whole relationship. And literally like nine months later, I was back over there with the family and everything. She was dating a new guy who was treating her very good. Uh, within in, in that time frame, the guy that she was with taken care of, he uh, ended up, I don't know if that girl cheated on him, but they broke up and he would, kept trying to get back with her and she just wasn't having it. She was like, no, fuck this. It's, you know, all this stuff. And he fucked up. He was miserable. He knew what he lost. And her life was great. And I literally brought it up. I said, hey, remember when we were going to say we we're going to laugh at it? And then we literally started like laughing like goddamn hyenas out of how ridiculous it was. Um, but yeah, you can learn from that. And that's what you have to do. You have to keep perspective and make sure you're, you know uh, what you have. That's my advice on relationships. You know, your boy's 34 now. All right, I just had a birthday, November 25th. Thanks for wishing me happy birthday. Um, just a wise old man now. All right, I'm, 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 I'm slowly going to become a silver fox. And I'm just ready for it. I'm ready just to wear vests and paperboy hats all the time. I'm reaching an age where I think it's, it's not even just ironic or cute anymore to wear a paperboy hat. It's like, no, it's, it's expected of me, you know? Thinking about getting like a corn, uh, corn cob pipe just smoking on it. Why not? You know, why not? Just start living, living like a, like an old silver fox should live. All right. Um, and people ask me 34 at first, there's like a little bit, you're like, Oh shit, 34, half, almost to 35. Uh, easy math. I'm pretty good at it. Uh, I don't mind getting older. I don't mind it. All right. Because I'm realizing if you keep progressing with life, keep setting new goals and leveling up as you age, you're not, you're not worried about it. It's not something you're trying to grasp. There is nothing that I want from being 18 again. There's nostalgia of it because you really don't have a lot of responsibilities. But for the most part, I'm like, I didn't know shit about shit. I didn't know fuck about shit, you know? And you yearn for that for just the, those wild years, but it's like you weren't really building anything. You were just enjoying life and just experimenting. Hey, how you guys doing? Ah, you know, uh, that's what I, I, I thought of my, you know, 18 to early 20s and everything like that. And then there's like, man, I don't know. I, I hit a weird lull in my mid 20s where I didn't, I, I was the in between where I was starting to work really hard on building my own life. And, you know, that's with, you know, graduating and uh, deciding I didn't want to go that route. You know, I didn't go the corporate route, the normal route that a lot of people go where it's safety in, you know, working for corporations or getting a good job, good paying job. I went the route of I'm going to be fucking broke for a while and just try to figure out what I want to do. And so from those years, you have to deal with so much fucking people's judgments and shit going on. That was like, you know, the weird phase of my life was in, you know, mid twenties was when, uh, people I knew were starting to get a couple years into having good jobs. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm just, uh, doing music and, uh, doing videos and trying to figure that out. Wasn't really making money from every, from any of that. And then you just see the silent judgment in people's eyes where they're like, oh, well I'm doing finance now. No, I'm doing this. And I'm like, are you? And then I would have people be like, hey, you have a degree in nursing, don't you? Oh, I would really consider going back. I'm like, would you? Oh, is that what you want me to do? Go fuck yourself. 
Dude, everybody who told me to go back to that shit, go fuck yourself, all right? People told me that, you know, video production, oh, everybody has a phone on their camera. Do they? Go fuck yourself. People tell me, oh, man, single-person podcasts don't work. Do they? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> just kidding, people. I'm just kidding. Kind of. Okay? But ever since I learned what a goddamn charcuterie board was, I ain't been right. All right? It's frustrating. All right? And you know what else is frustrating? The Texans, they can't handle cold. All right? I don't know what this is, but compared to even California, dare, dare I say, they can't handle it. You get them out in that cold weather and they're, they're nowhere to be found. In California right about now, I remember shows being good, popping off because people were kind of in the holidays looking to go out and do certain things. Texan, nah, they shut down. They're like, nah, 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 nah. We ain't here to watch no comedy. This weather's too fucking cold to joke around in. Catch you in the summer. How about that? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Listen. That holds no relevancy. But the podcast slowly going to be getting better. Okay, I need you guys to be patient with me. We're still figuring this shit out. This is only our second episode in the new studio. We're already improving off the last episode. All right. Uh, suggestions, feel free to send them in. If we have segment ideas, I'm going to start tinkering around with the podcast, trying to figure some things out. Um, guest ideas, we'll figure it out. All right. Uh, and I want you guys to know. Thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing, following the podcast, sharing it with a bud. And remember, no matter what, I still love you.